Justin, so good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Um, before we even get into this latest development about what this investigation could be, what do you know about the MDC? I know for quite some time they've needed long-term change their safety issues around the prison, the, the contraband. There is a problem at the top with leadership. When you're in high metropolitan areas, it's tough to get people to want to work there. There's high turnover. So the, this leadership failure is putting prisoners in jeopardy. There's very little accountability. I will tell you, when you hear interagency operation, that tells me this is very, very serious. They've had enough. I think Diddy being in prison at this time, I think it just aligns with him that's been going on for quite some time. I will say, I think it's concerning that they're not gonna share details of the investigation until it's complete. The biggest problem is the lack of transparency and accountability. And until that changes, it's going to be more of the same, more prisoners getting hurt, more safety issues, more settlements that taxpayers fund. The Bureau of Prisons needs more accountability. And until that happens, we're just gonna continue well, to have these calls in the weeks, months, and years to come. Well, the, the other way of looking at that is they wanna be sensitive. They don't wanna to release too much information during the course of this investigation that could jeopardize whatever they're looking into. So imagine, for example, they really are doing a widespread sweep of contraband. I mentioned some of the incidents that are happening. If they you know, make that announcement or they kind of give more details, Perhaps people could get rid of the evidence. Someone could help them. On that. And you tell me if that if I'm looking at it the wrong sure. way. Sure, I think like prudent transparency would be a good phrase, right? I know they're doing investigations. They might want to not want to divulge everything finding, but they could be updating stakeholders along the way. People are concerned about people are in prison. Their loved ones are concerned for them. They want to see some progress and growth. So I'm not suggesting they share everything that could threaten the security of the institution, which is really what any prison cares most about security of the institution keeping costs down but if they care about keeping costs down they're making decisions that only increase costs so they should share some information prudently to at least appease people who have an interest in, in overseeing this process what do you think is going on here why do you think this investigation is about do you think it's about looking for contraband or something else I think certainly it's looking for contraband. They know when you hear, when you have myriad agencies looking into this, there is a problem. And it's getting to a point where people have said enough. There's got to be effective leadership at the top. It needs to trickle down to staff. They may have to pay correctional officers more money. It's tough to get people to work in these communities, as I have said. So they're at a point where they have said this is a national embarrassment. It's something that both Democrats and Republicans agree on which is pretty damn uncommon in this environment. So they're at a point where they say, we want transparency, we want long-term change, we want accountability for staff, which is something that's been lacking over a sustained period of time. So I think they view this as an opportunity, but they tend to lack transparency in the process. I would argue the more they give, the more trust they're actually going to receive. And if they acknowledge failings along the way, people are then gonna say they're beginning to get it. They're not hiding. They're sharing only then can you have improvement, but it's difficult for anyone, including a massive bureaucratic agency to say, we've made mistakes. Here's how we're going to do better. There tends to be too much blaming and excusing, not enough accountability. And to give you an idea of that, I mean, the Bureau of Prisons announced last month that it was gonna increase staffing at the MDC by about 20%, but it's our understanding there's still a lot of positions left open, which is a scary thing to think about in terms of a facility that houses that many uh, detainees. I guess the question is, when we're thinking about this, and we'll talk about Combs in a second, but when we're thinking about the MDC, are the issues that are plaguing this facility just individual to this facility, or is this typical of federal lockups, other state lockups? Is the MDC an outlier? What can you tell us? It's very common across the country. There are certain areas where it's just more expensive to live. New York could be a more expensive area to live. I know the federal prison in Sheridan, Oregon, Oregon can be an expensive place to live. They've had trouble staffing that prison because if you're making sixty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year, I'm not saying it's not a lot of money. What I'm saying is that you can't sustain yourself living in that town. So the consequence is they don't have enough staff. There's not enough programs for the prisoners. Certain programs like the residential drug abuse program in the federal system that could take a year off of your system, a year off your sentence upon completion can no longer be run in that prison because there's not enough staff. Well, what does that mean? In California, for example, there isn't one camp 
or prison that offers the drug program. If you want to go to Oregon, you may have to go to Minnesota, Yankton, because of staff shortages. So they need to train better, they need to pay better, and they need to find a way to somehow retain the talent. And until they have, it's just going to be this revolving, revolving door. And that's part of the reason they're going through this massive investigation. And they're asking, finally asking good questions. What can we do to keep people on our team for longer period of, periods of time, protect prisoners, and have more accountability for, 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 for staff? It's reached a point where people have simply had enough. Do you think that it has anything to do with Sean Combs? Do you think it took a high-profile celebrity to be housed there? And remember, there's R. Kelly who was there. Um, uh, Sam Bankman Freed is being, uh, he's serving a sentence there. But let me ask you a question. Do you think it, it, it takes somebody like a Sean Combs who's there to bring attention to this? Do you think he, he's a factor in why this investigation is being launched? I don't. I think it's been going on since uh, Epstein hung himself in that adjacent prison. They knew that it was a problem boiling up for quite some time. And then with the publicity that came with Epstein, they had said we'd had enough. But when you're dealing with And just to be clear about that, that, that was the MCC. It closed in 2021. Correct. But yes, it's an adjacent yeah. prison, but still, yeah, yeah. We're, we're dealing with problems in these prison systems in New, in New York. And I just think it got to a point where they said there's too much attention on us. We just can't turn away from this any longer. And when you're dealing with the, the BOP, it's like the DMV times 100 with the bureaucracy, right? It takes so long to get these investigations going. And now that when you have several agencies involved in this operation, imagine the coordination of getting all these people together. This has been going on for weeks, months, and years. I just hope, as I said earlier, there is some prudent transparency and they're sharing progress, both good and bad. I would argue the more bad they share, the more they share what they could have done better and what they are learning, the more trust they're going to get from stakeholders like politicians. Until they do do that, it's going to continue and say anything. It threatens security of the institution. It's the same old playbook that doesn't work, and it's part of the reason there's such loathing from the left and right on how the BOP manages these issues. The reason I asked is because his lawyers, uh, you know, his, his lawyer, Mark Agnifilo, was quite vocal about the problems in that jail. Having said that, Combs at one point, his legal team was actually trying to transfer him to a jail in New Jersey. They seem to have abandoned that. I think they said at the time that the MDC was responsive to them. Not exactly sure what that meant. But now, look, Combs is trying to fight bail again. He's trying to ask the current judge, the new judge who's overseeing this case, Judge Arun Subramanian, to <clears throat> grant him bail. So this is a third judge that would consider it. Do you think that this investigation and these issues plaguing the MDC would work in his favor to get him bail or pretrial release? I don't. There are people in that prison who aren't getting bail for charges that are far less severe than his. And one thing the Bureau of Prisons want to do is treat him differently based on his status. If anything, you could argue they're going to make it harder. I empathize with his lawyer. He's saying what he's paid to say, but his client has to own and acknowledge his own conduct, not just the alleged crime, his post-offense conduct where the government felt he is a threat to the community. And for that reason, I expect him, regardless of who the judge is, to continue to be confined. And until he begins making different decisions, perhaps accepting responsibility, cooperating. I filmed a YouTube video where I said yesterday he should agree to turn over every dollar he has to victims and victims rights groups. It's the only way he doesn't serve 50 or 60 years in prison. Maybe it's how he gets 15 or 20. The onus is on him to make better decisions. Until then, you can expect his lawyer to continue to say what lawyers are paid to say. My guy should be free. It doesn't work not in this environment. Well, you know, the other way of looking at it is he is innocent until proven guilty. He hasn't been found liable uh, in any of these lawsuits. He's denying all the allegations. Um, I will ask you, though, when it comes to this, somebody this high profile uh, housed in an institution like this, his attorney alluded to the fact that he might be a target, talked about the violence in the MDC. How much of his concern, if you're Sean Combs being in this facility, that your life might be in danger? It's, a, it's certainly a concern. There are people in prison who have been there for a very long time who may, be, may feel forgotten, could care less if they're in prison for the rest of their life, if they go to a higher security prison, if they get transferred to go to the hole. So there is a, no doubt there is concern for his safety and his health, which is part of the reason he remains confined. Though I will tell you, there's a lot of high profile people in prison. We're looking at the Menendez guys getting out of prison potentially after 36 years. They've gotten they've gotten through it. There are high profile people who have been able to get through it. The downside for for Combs is it's just more scrutiny. It's more time in isolation. It's a harder experience. But there's no doubt there's risks for his life there.
which, and if he gets to the general population, he's really going to have to understand his environment. And he's going to have to understand how people are studying him and watching him it requires humility and how he responds. I know if he pleads guilty or is convicted and gets sentenced, we'll eventually talk about his life in that general population or how to even get through a very lengthy federal prison sentence. But to your question, there is no question. There's risk for his health and he thinks about it. And so does his family 24 hours a day. What do you think the result of this investigation is going to be? How much will we know what happens? Because I will say, um, Representative Goldman, who I mentioned before, he talked about how he co-sponsored the Federal Prison Oversight Act, which my understanding requires the DOJ's Inspector General's office to conduct vigorous oversight of the federal prison system. I wonder if this, what we're seeing now is part of that, but what do you imagine is gonna result from this interagency investigation? It's hard for people to see it, especially if their loved one has just come into the system, but change, it is getting better. Colette Peters has been an excellent director of the Federal Bureau of Prisons. She says, we wanna make good neighbors, not good inmates, but you have to understand this massive bureaucracy change takes time. So because I've been to prison and I've been in this space full time for the last 15 years, my business partner served 26 years in prison. He went to the penitentiary in 1987. It was measurably worse then. So we are seeing change. It's getting better. Unfortunately, it's not as fast as people would like, but I expect there to be more transparency, more accountability, more acknowledge, acknowledgements of failures. I think she's been a very good leader for the Federal Bureau of Prisons. There's been transition and turnover. I expect her to stay there for quite some time. I expect to see more progress and more importantly, accountability and transparency. And it all starts with saying we've made mistakes. They need to do what they expect people who are indicted of crimes to do, right? I get indicted for a crime. We want you to accept responsibility. We want you to say that you're going to do better. You're going to hold yourself accountable. You're going to prove worthy of a second chance. We want the Bureau to do the same exact thing for mistakes they have made. Justin McPerney. Thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Good to see you.